Welcome back, kiddos. This is part two of the Malls on Empire expansion. So if you've not checked out part one yet, please do so now. I'll leave a link down in the description. We have reached a stable point once again, with the Malls on Empire having expanded to include Quantali, Philar, Seven Cities, and a tiny holdout in Coral. Seven Cities quickly became a large source of grain and supplies, helping the Empire prosper, though the continent really did not like being under the bridle of the Malazan Empire. Here's where some things in the timeline get confused, and there's no real concrete evidence for the series of events, or for the scale. So I will be telling you what I believe happened, just keep in mind there's a little bit of speculation here. Kelenvad and Dancer are still exploring the realms in the background inside the Azoth house, and they've left Surly in charge as Imperial Regent. Tensions have been rising throughout Seven Cities, and very little is known about the campaign in Coral, except for that it was brutal and slow. There are also plans to begin a campaign in Genobacus to the northeast. Can't have your armies hanging out with nothing to do, right? I mean, Rome learned that lesson pretty well, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, tensions come to a head in Seven Cities when the High Fist of Aaron is murdered and the Tilan Amas come in to put down the riots. Some believe the Amas were ordered to action by Surly, and they obeyed, believing it was an order from the Emperor. The result is an overwhelming massacre, and the rest of the subcontinent rises in rebellion, some cities proclaiming new holy fallads. So now... The armies must go around once again under Dasimultor and put down each of these new rulers. After one of these battles, a cabal of mages escapes, and Dasim orders Commander Whiskey Jack to take his men to go track them down and finish them off. He only had about 70 soldiers, mixed and matched from broken squads, but he headed out with a native guide who was a newly recruited member of the Claw. The mages were chased across the Panpatsen Odan and into the holy desert were Raku. Due to the location, I believe that the battle had taken place at Air Latan. Their journey through Ruraku changed the soldiers somehow, burning away their pasts and creating a new company calling themselves the Bridge Burners. The Bridge Burners quickly earned their place as an elite company, gaining many more soldiers and becoming the favorite of Emperor Kellenved. Whiskey Jack led these men through the rest of the subjugation of the rebellion. Dasim and the armies continued their war effort until only one city was left, Yigatan. A siege is set up, but the walls are quickly broken through. The resulting battle is incredibly bloody, and Dasim and his first sword are cut down near the end. But after the city falls, the rebellion is over. With the threat of the rebellion finished, some armies are used to help rebuild Seven Cities' infrastructure, and the rest prepare to finally invade Genobacus. The bridge burners and other soldiers are called back to Mala's city, where Surly has decided to outlaw unsanctioned magic, causing a riot in the mouse quarter of Mala's city. The soldiers put down the riot, which got way out of control, and then the bridge burners are sent to Genobacus as well. Some time after these events, Emperor Kellenved and Dancer return from their journeys in the background and head to Mox Hold, only for Surly to assassinate them using her claw as well as purging Dancer's Talon organization. Surly proclaims herself to be Empress and changes her name to Lacine, which is an upon word meaning Throne Master. This betrayal caused a lot of upheaval and restructuring. Members of Kellenved's family disappeared or wound up dead, including some men drowning, even though they were excellent swimmers. Whiskey Jack gets demoted to squad leader inside the Bridge Burners, and she makes sure that Kellenved's favorite company is used on all of the difficult or suicidal missions. Genobacus turns into a huge mess for the Malazans. Dujic is in charge of the three armies for the campaign, the 2nd, 3rd, and 5th. Initially, the situation seemed good. The Malazans captured a few coastal cities such as Nathalog and Genobaris, and they found allies in the people known as the Moranth. This gained them additional troops as well as explosive munitions that would eventually change the Malazan military tactics. 
the free cities of Genobacus formed an alliance against the Malazans and resisted fiercely. The second and third army captured the city of Melintius, and then traveled south, capturing Mott and Oraz. The Bridgeburners are then sent into Mott Wood to protect supply lines from renegades while the armies continue east. And this is where the tides really turn against the Malazans, as the free cities gain some very powerful allies. These allies consisted of the Crimson Guard under Prince Kaz, the Ilgris, which are a large tribe of Bargost, the Rivi Plains people with their herds of Bedarin, the Flying Fortress of Moonspawn with the Ascendant Anamander Rake and his Tistandi, many small mercenary groups or small city armies, and they're all under the control and command of Kaladan Brood, another Ascendant. The sheer amount of opposition here is astounding, but not even this can fully stop the Malazans. Years of grueling combat and the Malazans are getting whittled down, though Hyphus Dujic has slowly and methodically been gaining ground and capturing cities in northern Genobacus. After heavy losses, the Third Army is dissolved into the Second and Fifth, and the Empire continually feeds new recruits onto the continent via the port city of Genobaris. This includes an additional army, the Malazan Sixth. The Bridgeburners continue being put into the bloodiest campaigns and battles, including Mott Wood and Black Dog Forest, both campaigns being drawn out for years. It seems the Empress wants to bleed them dry. By the 12 year mark on the campaign, things were looking fraught for both sides. There are only two of the original 10 free cities left, Darujasan and Pale, with Pale having been besieged by the Malazan Second Army for three years. Anamander Rake and his floating fortress, Moonspawn, have been stationed above Pale, keeping the Malazans at bay. The Fifth Army has been severely reduced by extended battles in northern Genobacus against Kaladan Brood, and recruitment numbers are down for the Malazans, with them pulling from pretty much everywhere they can. Due to the slowing progress, Hyphus Dujic has finally decided it's time to force the issue and begins making preparations for taking Pale. Lacine seems to be stable in her position as Empress, and the only members of the old family left are Admiral Nock and Hyphus Dujic, who leads the campaign on Genobacus. All is not well throughout the Empire, though. The Corelri campaigns are losing ground, Genobacus has been at a standstill for years, facing fierce opposition, and unrest in Seven Cities is on the rise yet again. This is where the city opens with Gardens of the Moon, as it seems the Empire is spread too thin. This video ended up being a little bit shorter than I thought it would, but hopefully everyone who watched it enjoyed it. If you have any topics you want to see me discuss, or if you have any questions on this topic, please leave a comment down below. But keep in mind, this is supposed to be very, very light on spoilers, so just try not to ruin anything in the comments. Thank you very much.